Hello everybody and welcome to part 4 of the Suzuki Bandit Project. So this week I'd love to tell you I've balanced the carbs but due to a run in with the local constabulary I haven't yet. So what I'm going to do today is I'm going to take you for a tour around our new workshop slash office and I'm also going to answer some of the questions that people have left on our comment section. So I got pulled by the local constabulary and they just want to have a chat with bikers, uh, tell them about bike safe courses and stuff like that just to help educate riders as the sunny weather's now out and everyone's dragging their bikes out of the garage after the cold winter. And because of this chat, unfortunately I was running a bit late and didn't get a chance to actually balance the carbs. So I'm going to look at the uh, comments you've left on Facebook and then uh, give them an answer. And then after that, uh, I'm going to show you around our new workspace where we're going to be doing a lot more of the project. So I'm going to have a look through a few comments on my phone uh, about what you guys have been talking about and saying about. And uh, yeah, I'll, I'll answer some questions uh, best I can. So let me have a scroll through. So Alan here uh, says paint it black and that is one of my long term plans. Probably not going to happen over the summer but you never know. I do want to paint it black because some people are a fan of the green. I'm definitely not. So John has commented uh, make a list of what you need. I've got loads of parts kicking around including suspension bolts. John I think I might take you up on that offer. Because I've got one bolt, just need the other one. So I'll uh, I'll send you a message very soon. So we've got a comment for Neil. Just read it out for you. Great series, loving it. Just a note though, I always split the carbs into four separates. I once had a GPZ 750 that ran like a bag of spanners up to about 70 miles per hour. Then it ran fine. Did exactly what you have done. Stripped, cleaned and changed worn parts. It made no difference whatsoever. It was only on the third strip that he split the carbs into four and found the fuel line between each carb was full of flaky paint from the tank. So thanks for that, John. Although it is running a lot better now, I've done the carbs, just need to balance them to stop the hunting on tick over. So thanks for the advice, John. And if I do have any more problems with it, that is something I'll check out. So Kevin asks, why did I take the rear panels off to uh, get the screws on the airbox. We did actually uh, talk a little bit on Facebook, but just for anyone else that wonders, on a Mark I Bandit 1200, just behind these panels here is where the uh, bolts are to keep the airbox in place. So you actually have to take those out so you can move the airbox to get the carbs out. So another John has said, these videos need to be more in depth. I would like to have seen how he got the screws out. It's a bit pointless otherwise. Thank you for the comments, John. We appreciate your constructive criticism. I will go in more depth now because uh, I'm going to have some help shooting the videos. I've been shooting them by myself, so it's kind of hard making sure I'm in the frame and uh, everything else. But I've got someone helping me now, so they will be more in depth from now on. David Ree says, cut the carb body to get the mixture screws out. New carb body? No, John. Luckily, the mixture screws are actually on the outside of the car bodies. So I'll give you a close-up shot, but on the bottom of the car, at the front, as they're sitting on the bike, uh, there's like a tube that the mixture screws sit at the bottom of, and you can cut into that tube without actually affecting the operation of the car. So lucky for me, I could do that. So I'm going to take you around our workspace now. Um, show you some of the tools we got, some of the bits we got for the project and uh, just generally where we'll be working on the bike from now on. So let's have a look around. So welcome to the guided tour of our workspace for the Bandit project. Let me take you on a guided tour. Our Carly Designs calendar with a very nice RD500 for May. We've got our new tool trolley, which will come in quite handy. We've got some products for the Bandit. Some companies are very kindly sent to us. I'll uh, run you through them now. Got some bits from Mad for Bikes. We've got the rust blocker and the tank coating. 
So uh, if we have any rust problems, or well, hopefully we won't have any rust problems because of the, uh, the tank stuff. So can't wait to give those a try, see how we get on. So next shelf down, we've got some bits from Suzuki. We've got one brake disc. The other one's on back order, so it should be with us very soon. Got a brand new rear shock. I've even got genuine Suzuki brake pads, which I've never come across before. And we've got some disc bolts. So, next shelf down is some bits we got from Wii Moto. I've got a new Gecko clutch, which hopefully I'm going to be fitting rather soon. Got the steels for the clutch just there. And I have some sprockets, different sizes, which I want to. Do a bit of an experiment with when I fit the chain sprocket kit. And we got a nice care package from the guys at Putaline, they're just down the road from us. Sent us a few bits and bobs we might need. So we've got some brake fluid which will come in handy when the new brake lines are fitted. Got some chain loop, which is always handy. Uh fork oil for when we do the suspension, and we got some engine oil for when we do the service. So, this is the, the main work area where the bandit is. We have an ABBA Skylift, which I've got to put together. So, I'm going to uh, get the instruction manual out and uh, put that together very soon because it's going to be handy not working on the bike at ground level and having it just a little bit higher makes life that bit easier. So, uh, yeah, thanks for the the guys at Abba for that, I can't wait to give it a try. So, let me move you on to our tools, which Sealy have sent over to us. So we've got something to work on the bike with. Got some very interesting spanners with sockets on the end. Got a nice socket set, which will keep us going. And I should say there's most stuff in there to take a bandit apart, to be honest with you. You don't need many tools for a bandit. We've got some more spanners, a hammer, because we're bound to have to hit something. Quite a large selection of screwdrivers. Couldn't believe how many screwdrivers actually sent us, to be honest with you. Got some pliers, thin those pliers, some adjustable spanners, just in case. And we have Allen keys and stickers. So, anybody want a sticker? Should we do a giveaway? Let us know. And this one, got a couple of little bits, which again, always handy for those little fiddly jobs. And the bottom one, got some more screwdrivers, because you can never have too many. Hacksaw and a junior hacksaw, and a bigger hammer because there's bound to be something we're going to have to hit. So, there is our workshop. Or workspace, shall I say. And, uh, yeah. There's the bandit. Waiting to be worked on. So, the old uh, tyres are getting a bit low. They're uh, almost at the wear markers, so it will be replaced fairly soon. So, has anyone got any suggestions for new tyres for the Bandit? Let us know what tyres you think we should run and uh, tag the company in the comments. Let them know what we should be running on the Bandit and what you think. So, there we go. We'll uh, keep you updated on any changes or anything we get for the workspace. So, again, thanks to the guys that Mad for Bikes, Suzuki, Wii Moto, they've hooked us up with loads of stuff, and uh, Putaline. So, yeah, thanks guys, and uh, on to the next bit. So, thank you for watching part four of the Bandit Project. I'm really sorry I didn't get to balance the carbs this week, but life does get in the way sometimes. So, next week, fingers crossed, I should be balancing the carbs. Failing that, I think I'm going to make a start on the clutch as that has been irritating me while riding and it does really need to be done. So, don't forget to tune in next week at 9pm where we'll be posting the next video on our Facebook page. Until next week, see you later.